Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. white police officer who shot and killed a 26-year-old black man in his own home in Dallas in 2018 has been convicted of murder. The verdict came down Tuesday, more than a year after off-duty police officer Amber Geiger killed Botham Jean. I'm starting today's episode like this for many reasons, uh, the least of which is not to um, is to establish the fact that, um, as all of you know, and I've said time and time again on this show, um, without any reservation, I am a Christian, and I have been one uh, since the age of seven. I was born into a Christian family, and it only makes sense that I have become a Christian, even though I found it for myself as I got older and came back to it that's my story i want to establish that first and foremost because i have to talk about a pathology that exists amongst christians that black christians in particular that enables white supremacy to go unchecked in this country day after day year after year it is the pathology of forgiveness without actual justice we are constantly asked if we forgive our abusers We're constantly asked if we forgive those people who brutalize us systemically. Do we forgive the white police officers who killed our nephew, our friend? Do we forgive the officer who killed Corey Jones? Do we forgive the officer who killed Botham Jean? Do we forgive the officer who killed Michael Brown? Do we forgive George Zimmerman for killing Trayvon Martin? We are constantly asked in the black community whether or not we forgive someone and black Christians time and again because this is what we're taught in church we're taught that forgiveness is the most important thing that we can do and time and again we forgive and I want to make a clear distinction here while this story is uh, while this podcast is nestled inside of the story of Botham Jean and the forgiveness that his father and his mother and his brother offered to Amber Geiger It's not about them. What I'm getting ready to say is not about that family. This is this distinction is extremely important because I am a strong proponent of you cannot tell someone how they need to heal. If these are the steps that that family needs to be able to deal with the reality that their son is no longer on this earth. If that is how they have to cope, then I can't tell them anything differently. They are free to cope however it is that they need to cope. However, I am speaking to this performative act amongst black Christians when we run, when we want, number one, we are not the victims. We are just observers of their pain and we run to celebrate how it is the case that this is the most divine expression of our faith. To be able to forgive someone who hurt us deeply. And in fact, it is a performative act that is only required of black Christians, particularly in the context of the brutality that we face in this country that we have faced historically and the residual, the the remnant of uh, uh, the, the lingering vestiges of that brutality that still exists, both in the vilification of black people, the dehumanization of black people. And police violence. We as black people are the only people in this country who are asked to look at our accuser, look at our abuser, to look at the people who brutalize us and to forgive them. And that act in and of itself is a tool of powerful people to maintain their power. Your forgiveness is not required of you in order for you to be a a Christian. They're not asking you for your forgiveness to demonstrate how good of a Christian you are as much as they are asking you for your forgiveness to demonstrate how much you're willing to capitulate to this system. And you're not even the victim. You're not even the victim's family. 
You're just another Christian like myself who instead of seeing this and being outraged by it, the continuous, it doesn't stop. Amber Geiger walked into this man's home and killed him in the privacy of his home. And the system almost gave her an out by allowing her to use the castle doctrine, which is another version of stand your ground, which essentially said that because she believed this was her home. She was authorized to use force to protect herself. And while that 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 defense argument did not work, we're now asked to forgive her. We're now asked to show her grace to show her mercy and everyone is celebrating this act of mercy from the judge of all people. I have nothing really to say about the family because again, I'm, I'm deeply committed to the fact that however a person needs to heal, whatever process they need to go through, if they find it necessary to forgive someone for their healing process to begin, so be it. But the judge in this case came off the bench and hugged Amber Geiger After she sentenced her to 10 years. And I have to ask the question sis. Because she was a black woman. When's the last time you hugged a black person. That you sentenced to 40 years in prison. 50 years in prison. To life. It does not happen. Because we have a special place in our hearts. In this country for white tears. And it is. Because our faith. Teaches us grace. And mercy. And forgiveness. That we black people, instead of showing America what America has shown us, because pause and ask yourself the question, when is the last time America showed black people the level of mercy and grace that America always requires of black people? Think about that. But it is because of our commitment to our religion and our faith that we are continuously manipulated into forgiving a system. Amber Geiger is a product of the system. And instead of using our righteous anger, our righteous indignation, our justifiable rage to change this system, we have instead been placated by the seductiveness of the allure of forgiveness and the performative act of forgiveness. That family may need to forgive in order to heal but you black christian have no requirement to forgive this woman because the crime was not committed against you and you have every right to use your righteous indignation your fury your rage to change the system that continuously brutalizes us but instead You join in, and this is the pathology, you join in into the course of people who are celebrating forgiveness more than they are advocating for change. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. And freedom will be defended. I want to reassure the American people that the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake. The United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. In the darkest moment of American history in our lifetime, the darkest moment that we experienced together on 9-11, not a single Christian offered or suggested that we forgive the people who attacked us. I think that actually just says it all but i actually have to dig a little deeper there are two distinctly different versions of christianity that are at work in america every single day one is the christianity that justifies any action in the name of god 
that justifies any military action, that justifies any invasion, that justifies any war, any violence, that justifies the death penalty, that justifies uh, the prison industrial complex, that justifies police brutality because they believe they are doing the work of God when they exact vengeance for crimes committed against them, both real and perceived. It is a justification that reigns and explains not only not only the behavior pattern of this country, but it provides it, it provides religious justification for it. The second type of Christianity that is very active in America, just as active in this country, is the, is the type of Christianity that says, forgive everyone. Forgive those who hurt you. Forgive the government for slavery. Forgive the government for Jim Crow. Forgive the government for the prison industrial complex. Forgive the government for the crimes against the black community, flooding the black community with crack cocaine. Forgive the government for all of these things, because that is your job. That is your requirement as a dutiful Christian, a black Christian. Meanwhile, the faith of your white brothers and sisters says that they have the entire right to execute vengeance upon people who hurt them. They have the right not only personally, but they have the right systemically and they have the right with the full force of the federal government. And don't you dare ask us to forget. Don't you dare ask us to forgive. How dare you ask us to forgive those who assaulted us, who attacked us? You want to see how far Christian white Christianity forgives? Ask them to forgive those who attacked us on 9-11. Ben, that's an absurd. That's apples to oranges, is it? Is it really because it is an attack on an individual and an attack on our country and a country that swears that it is founded on the principle of Christianity? But if that's the case, then you have to admit that the Christianity that America celebrates is 100 percent different than the Christianity that they demand black people to celebrate. Because if we black people acted on our faith, The way white people have acted on their faith historically, this country would have been burned to the ground in a molten heap of ashes a long time ago. When has America ever shown black people the level of mercy that they require of black people? When has America shown the international community the level of forgiveness and mercy that they demand black people show America? Instead, we respond as a nation with the full force of the federal government and our military might, and we get our revenge. And we simply call it justice. And because we wrap it in the veneer of justice, it's okay, biblically speaking, because God wants justice. Except for you, black person, he wants you to forgive. souls and hearts I thank them less than 24 hours ago the jury returned a guilty verdict against 22 year old Chanel Lewis we the jury find the defendant guilty even if I was trying to sustain myself to control myself it was uncontrollable it, it was just total jubilation and all all the anger all the years of pain but mostly the anger was lifted it was gone those were the voices of the parents of karina vetrano who was killed several years ago by a black man and you heard the celebration the jubilation that took place in the courtroom once they heard the guilty the guilty verdict but what you didn't hear because it didn't happen As I listened to the entire interview, you did not hear anyone asking that family if they forgave the murderer. 
In fact, this is what they said about the murderer. Her most horrendous death and moments, last moments of her life at the hands of a savage demon. And it has nothing to do about what color he is or who he is. No one would dare ask that family if they forgave the murderer. But every single time, every time, Mother Emmanuel AME, they ask, do you forgive? And the church folks, the black folks, the God bless them, maybe they have to forgive in order to move on. They forgave. Every time, though, we are required to forgive because it gives this country some sense of consolation that the people that they have hurt the most historically and continue to brutalize are still forgiving them, which means they really have no responsibility to change. People don't really change when you're always letting them off the hook, because in this case, we are allowing them to get off the hook. They are getting away with murder and in exchange, we are giving them forgiveness and this forgiveness, as much as we try to tell ourselves that it is for us, it's really not. It's for white America. It's for the government. It's for them to feel confident that black folks haven't gotten angry enough to actually change anything. And the way I know for certain that it is not for us is because we are dying on the inside. Forgiveness is supposed to be a gesture of releasing things. But how many black folks are dying at an early age? All the built up rage, all the built up anger, all the built up uh, uh, just frustration with systemic injustices. All the times we see black bodies laying in the streets, all the black, all the times we see our young black men being executed by police officers. We're dying at 50 and 60 years old while white folks are living the nice ripe old age. Article for some psychology today to give you better context by Dr. Sherman Coughlin, Ph.D. She wrote this about um, why you don't always have to forgive. This is the advice counselors are giving, um, giving people, not black folks, because we don't go get mental counseling. We just go to church. But this is what she said, quote, with time, you come to realize that you are moving forward. And it is usually at this point that someone will ask about forgiveness at some point in your grieving process. Someone somewhere will ask you if you forgive. Do you forgive your rapist? Do you forgive your father? Do you forgive your mother? Could you forgive your spouse? Though society pressures you to forgive the person who wronged you. The truth is that forgiving may be the worst thing you can do. Many religions and therapies focus on forgiving a perpetrator so that the victim can, quote unquote, move on. The goal is to make sure that the victim does not become fixated on the hurt. This element is critical because if you become completely obsessed with your victimization, you will not be able to function. That is a fact. Fixating freezes you. However, forgiveness is not something that just happens. Some people find it helpful to release their anger while others find the idea disgusting. I have dealt with my share of patients of murdered children and victims of sex crimes. Though many find a way to move forward in life, forgiveness truly eludes them. This does not make them bad people. This just means that it is not healing for them at this time. We prioritize forgiveness as black Christians above healing. We suggest that forgiveness is the first step in healing. It's not. It's not. Coming to terms would happen to you. Sometimes it just takes you a lifetime to understand what the hell just happened to you. How can you forgive someone when you are still grappling with? With the fact that you have been brutalized. That you have been taken advantage of. How can you forgive someone for something that you don't fully understand? And yet as black Christians, we are required time and again to offer first our forgiveness. We try to model ourselves after Christ as he was on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But you're talking about the omnipotent God who knows all things and understands the exact context of his crucifixion compared to a child who doesn't understand 
while why their mother was murdered by the police, why their brother was killed by another person, why why their son was accosted by the police. There's they don't even understand what fully happened to them, and yet we are requiring them requiring of them a divine act that does not lend itself towards their own personal healing. They first have to come to terms with what happened with them. But we in the church, we have it backwards, and I believe it's intentionally so. I think it is intentionally required of black people to forgive first because if we ever use the Bible the way white folks use the Bible personally in their lives and collectively in this country, we would destroy this country. And that's why it is so important that black Christians that we become uh, placated by the by the seductiveness of our forgiveness performance and we're celebrated by it because of it the news will tell stories about the unbelievable forgiveness of black people how is it that they are so loving they'll tell stories and they'll make they'll make they'll rewrite your entire legacy they'll take a man who who understood the need for forgiveness, but understood the fact that we have to fight for what we need and they will completely make him a docile creature of history. And the only thing they will have you to discuss about him is his dream and not the fact that he took the fight to Washington, D.C. They will make monuments to your name because you're so forgiving. And the reason they will do that is because if they don't celebrate our forgiveness, if white America does not celebrate our forgiveness, then we will have time to think about and come to terms with what really happened to us. And sometimes your healing process is not about forgiving them. Sometimes your healing process is about rectifying the harm that was committed somewhere in this grieving process of being abused, being hurt, being murdered, those of us who survive have to find a way to stop it from happening. But if we put forgiveness first before we've even come to terms with what happened to us, then we become complicit in our own abuse. <laughs> We become the spouse, the battered spouse who constantly forgives the husband and constantly goes back and constantly makes excuses because it's their job in their mind to forgive, but never to bring correction. Do you forgive this woman? How do you feel about her? I don't, I don't forgive this woman at all. I think she was crazy. I think she had something going on with her. I think she had a special ill. Well, and she needs help and she really needs help for that. There is a nine there. There is a nine year old boy, Jeremiah Harvey. Being asked if he forgives the woman who falsely accused him of sexual assault, a grown woman at a corner store accused this nine year old of sexual assault. And he subsequently had to go through our judicial system until she finally confessed that she made it up. Or actually, I'm sorry, correction. The video came out and showed that there was nothing. She didn't confess a thing. But he was asked at nine years old, little black boy, do you forgive this woman? Here he is having to understand all of these complicated ideas. All he knows is that he got in the most trouble he has ever been in in his life. And had this been just 50 years ago, it would have been enough to get him killed like Emmett Till. And yet, while he's trying to come to terms with at nine years old, what sexual assault is, what a false accusation is, and why this grown adult would accuse him of something he did not do, such that he got into the biggest amount of trouble he has ever gotten to in his life. While he's trying to come to grips with those big ideas, he's being asked for forgiveness. He's being asked to forgive this woman. And when we can't process these things, we internalize these things. And when we internalize these things, we take it out on other people or we take it out on ourselves with, 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 with how we live, our, our, our habits, our eating habits. We, there's so many ways that these negative energies that are inside of us, these negative feelings and abuses that we have not even had time to process just manifest itself in our health and we die early. Because we've been forgiving people before we even got healing ourselves. 
and we've been forgiving people collectively as a people, as a black people, before we ever change the system that continues to beat us. Maybe I'll forgive you after you've stopped harming me. But I cannot forgive you while you still brutalize us and while you still murder us. I can't offer you forgiveness. It's not my job to. My job is to make sure that you never hurt my people ever again. And then at such time, we can talk about forgiveness because I want to let it go. But how can I let something go when you continue to do it to me? See you tomorrow. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.